About 71% of our planet is covered by ocean water. That is 139.5 million square miles of the Earth's surface, or 21 times the size of Russia, the largest country in the world. Oceans actually represent up to 97% of the Earth's water. So, we know how big the ocean is. But do we really know how deep it goes? And what exactly is lurking down in the depths of the sea? The ocean is much, much deeper than you can imagine. Humans have already submerged quite deep into the ocean to almost 36,000 feet. But overall, 95% of the ocean remains unexplored. Let's start by saying that we can only tolerate a certain amount of water pressure before we get our eardrums and lungs ruptured. The water pressure is literally a force that the ocean applies to us when we dive down. The human body usually deals with the weight of the atmosphere and its own internal pressure, but it is not used to water pressure and it starts suffering its effects only a few feet below the surface. This is why the limit for recreational scuba diving is only 40 meters deep. In general terms, it's dangerous to go deeper than 100 meters into the water due to decompression sickness. That is only a bit deeper than the length of the New York Yankee Stadium, if we could place it underwater. But wait, there are trained divers who went much deeper than that. In 2007, Austrian freediver Herbert Nitsch broke the freediving world record when he swam down to 213 meters into the Mediterranean Sea with one single breath. And former Egyptian army officer Ahmed Gaber broke the world record for the deepest scuba dive in 2014 when he descended 330 meters deep into the Red Sea, an equivalent to the height of the Eiffel Tower. Diving down further to 500 meters, we find the maximum depth a blue whale can swim to, and slightly below this is the emperor penguin's maximum depth of 535 meters. The deeper we submerge, sunlight rapidly decreases, but it isn't until we get to the depths of 1,000 meters underwater that total darkness sets in. Because most living beings need light to live, after entering the midnight zone of the ocean, you won't find swordfishes, dolphins, shrimps, or any other sea creatures we are the most familiar with. At most, you can find the leatherback sea turtle, which can swim to 1,280 meters. Then it's all about scary deep sea creatures that have adapted to live in the permanently dark environment. Most of these creatures are blind or produce their own light through bioluminescence a chemical reaction between a light-emitting molecule and an enzyme called luciferase. The midnight zone of the ocean, which begins at 1,000 meters below the surface, is home to the famous giant squid, which has a total body length of 13 meters, and the anglerfish, which lures other fish with its luminescent fin ray to hunt them. Doubling our depth to 2,000 meters, we find the black dragonfish, a deep-sea creature with a snake-like body and multiple fangs that emit a near-infrared light that isn't visible to the human eye. Unlike other deep-sea predators, the black dragonfish doesn't use the light to lure prey, but rather to see and actively attack it. Other sea creatures inhabiting the midnight zone are the strawberry squid, the colossal squid, the vampire squid, the pacific viper fish, and the barrel eye fish. Surprisingly though, at around 2,250 meters, we could still have an encounter with a sperm whale, as this mammal can hold its breath for 90 minutes before surfacing to breathe again. And at 2,992 meters, we could see a Cuvier's beaked whale, if we caught them performing one of their deepest dives. The Cuvier whale holds the longest ever recorded dive, as it managed to hold its breath for 3.7 hours before surfacing to breathe again. Almost at the bottom of the midnight zone at 3,800 meters, oceanographer Robert Ballard located the wreck of the Titanic on September 1, 1985, with the help of a side-scan sonar in an expedition financed by the US Navy. Let's go a bit deeper, to the next layer of the deep ocean, the abyssal zone, which is between 4,000 to 6,000 meters underwater. 
The abyssal zone actually covers 83% of the total area of the ocean, and it's not only dark, but also very, very cold. Because the sunlight is not able to penetrate the midnight zone, it can't warm up the water in the abyssal zone, so it is at a constant temperature of 2 to 3 degrees Celsius at all times. The creatures in the abyssal zone must be adapted, not only to the darkness but also to the sheer cold, and of course they must be able to resist the water pressure, which at this point is 11,000 psi. Those who are capable of supporting these rough conditions are the blobfish, the flesh-eating crustacean, the brittle star, the glass sponge, and the faceless fish, to name a few. Apart from these animals, another interesting treasure we can find in the abyssal zone of the ocean is the wreck of the Bismarck. This German battleship sunk on May 24, 1941, during World War II, and it was discovered by Robert Ballard and his team in 1989, just four years after finding the RMS Titanic at approximately 4,790 meters under the waters of the North Atlantic Ocean near France. Between 6,000 to 11,000 meters, we finally enter the Hadal Zone, the deepest layer of the ocean, in which most seafloors are located. In 2012, with the assistance of the Deep Sea Challenger submersible vessel, film director James Cameron went down 10,898 meters to reach the world's deepest frontier, which is located in the Challenger Deep a depression in the Mariana Trench, whose bottom is 10,994 meters below the surface. The world record is held by two oceanographers, Don Walsh and Jacques Picard, who in the year 1960 traveled for five hours in a submarine to reach 10,916 meters deep. But they had to resurface shortly after that because one of the submarine's windows cracked. Contrary to popular belief, in the Hadal Zone, there are no deep-sea monsters scarier than the ones we've previously met. Marine life is actually limited in such cold, high-pressure depths. This is why the Hadal Zone is mostly inhabited by benthos, such as sea cucumbers, sea anemones, bivalves, bristle worms, and amphipods. But scientists have the feeling there's a lot more to discover in the deep sea. We hope you enjoyed this video and please do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. For more interesting videos like this, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications, and most importantly, share. Until then, we will see you soon in the next video.